one second glance, someone has forgotten. It's unfortunate for the Union. The drawer opens smooth. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being. It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweep office floor, more. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Everard Claire, probably, the head of the Debarders Union. One of his... The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Remember, Leo, all oh. items on the list. The drawer slides. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, tokens unavailable due to strike. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Your fingers run over the dial pad, 005. That's the dialing code for Revershaw. Calling, calling, still calling. Video Revachal, 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy, how may I help you? The voice of a youngster on the other end sounds as enthusiastic as that of a man walk. Video Revachal is a 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy. Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. No. Okay. Maybe you call to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? If you need any further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager Main. I can't help you over the phone. Are we- The call is terminated by the other party. Oh, ich heiße, denke ich, Harry, oder? Hm. Oh. Und man dann zurück. It's okay to take a few minutes to you need to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. 
have a seat. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse content. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Ren. Why did you take that picture of Rene? You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure. As long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin gray pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. You stand and exit. Um... several knobs, two buttons marked Marsh, Marsh, on, Alect, off. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that it's per- Moving this container, of course. I can't see how that was worth the wreckers, except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. container. Just one of many in the yard. <sighs> Is this like your thing with that wall again? <laughs> you do? Because I don't. There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? You just picked one out because you wanted to interact with a cargo container. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to get the body down from the tree. No reply. The knock produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. Du überzeugst die Tür sich zu öffnen.
வருமா schon öfter benutzen können. Ich das angucken. Das Buch. Habe ich was gefunden? Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work. Not that with great effort he straightens himself up in his chair. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. Okay, I can't find on. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Dubardes Union here in Martinez. Hello. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like... You go ahead, detective. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Okay. Filter it out. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me. How can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Rebishal Citizens Militia today? It's yours. The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh my god. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. 
Bin mir nicht sicher, ob ich das Geld nicht hätte einfach nehmen sollen. Aber ich glaube, das ist ein bisschen schlechte Grundlage. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Der Stuhl treibt dich in den Wahnsinn. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. So. What is this, Mr. Dubois, he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick. Here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin A's. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. <clears throat> oh. You're being too modest, my friend. 
But don't worry. This annoying thing I have is completely legal. I just need you to open a door. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar. Pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. No ones. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. <coughs> Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, we won't be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this was just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. For your sake, my sake, and for your gun's sake too. Yes, we both understand what you meant. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kid. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored in that you pawned it. Now please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry. Relax. I have great guys on this. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... Big man peers at you over the rims of his glove. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Of course, let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everart, I call you Harry. That's what the hanged corpse called you. Harry. You My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. 
It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's hiding it from you, because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau, and everything else from your actions here in Martinism. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, <laughs> tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him, great guy. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree. And with finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, 
but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everart doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbour. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Den Ernst? Na, ist doch wer drin. A fantastic change of heart, Harry. Go talk to Manjana down by the gates. He'll brief you and give you the key. And just like that, it's happening. The roller coaster is moving. Too late to take it back now. Just open one little door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. That's it. Anything else we should discuss? Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Yeah, to die. lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Sand has only worsened since the last, so it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your con- You're so noble, Measure Head. There's a pot. But, while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic Hablogu. <sighs> Babe, see that they stay here the whole time.
the woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? Look at him. His craniometric perfection. Are you cops or what? Have you ever thought that maybe things should go to shit? I'm Katya, by the way. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. Look at you! RCM Retta Cops! Guarding that bridge like Ebron's lapdogs! Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale! And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? A shrill laughter interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. The man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. Farewell, Lambs on Witch. You are a Union man from now on. Und hat sowas ruiniert. Uff. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pine wood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Mr. Measurehead has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. The RCM's four-phase murder scene processing manual. The fuck are they on about? Cops gonna cut his shit up! No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain. From autopsy to clean up, to social work, everything. An honor and a burden attached to your rank once you've proven yourself able. Usually after five to eight years of field work. Mine is lieutenant detective. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now... The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Shoot, Looney Rooney. Come back later, Corpo. Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano, Corpus Windy, 
is the world's highest summit, and the failure of the 38 single, Epui de Saint, to crack the top 20 was the death knell of disco. But what a field autopsy is, you have no idea. You must have me confused with the Copperpedia. You, sir, you are the Copperpedia. Unfortunately, no. They are better than nothing. Tell you what, I perform the anatomical side of things while you will take notes. That's right. Yeah, we got this. We're smart. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with That's you. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... KK57-0803. KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. 57 equals Precinct 57. Followed by his date, 0803 and time of arrival, 0815, on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. <laughs> That's because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. Next, N.A. Next, N.A. Hmm, roughly 50. Try 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. He nods. Mondial. Fair to olive skinned from the Isola of Mwindi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say, whitish. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. <laughs> fucky, fucky! Male. <laughs> Pigs could have sex! Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. We're still going with March 4th, 51. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non-applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. None, at least not after the initial examination. Interfering with the body's position or wounds post mortem. They'd have to have incapacitated and carried him over. This man was more than a match for untrained dog walkers. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. We should start the post-mortem. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. 
The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. Oh, see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more. The rest of the clothes have been removed post-mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. The boot has a serial number. It's E50.100.1000. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo resembling a microelectronical circuit board. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with the age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. His hair feels wet. Soaked with rain, cold to touch, not that different from a living person after a swim. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to your hand like thread off a rag doll's head. There's brilliant time in there. He's combed his hair back with oil. More hair sticks to your hand. Hair off the rain-soaked head of a dead man. There are bumps and dips on the skull below. And Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was... Fucking Max! Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Ligature mark. <clears throat> the steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You've got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Let's out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Always good to think ahead. Now... We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Care? See? My pig is gonna fuck his head off! No he ain't! Your pig's a boring fuck! The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the yeast. The knot is the weak spot, 
The chain cutters fit in there, steady now, like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. After some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Snap! The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia... No! <laughs> Let's get out of it, see! I fucking knew it! Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. The dead man's penis is average sized, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand thigh and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here, of battles, wars. Last item, hands. The hand is surprisingly heavy to lift, filled with decay liquids. Feels as though it could explode if squeezed harder. You're suddenly repulsed, so much so you feel compelled to drop it. Hands are clean, no sign of injury from struggling. I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Ooh, that's all for the external. Well done. What next? Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. What would that be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. Good. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it, gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. You hear cracks as the lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside the flesh, like the creaking of an old house at night. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Respiratory system. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. Oof. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. 
hemorrhaging present in mucus. Hepatobiliary, NA. Ah, are you a hepatobiliary expert? Hepato means liver, and biliary, the gallbladder and bile ducts. Nothing in your alcohol-soaked memory directs to having forensic expertise on either one. Neither am I. That's it. Same for toxicology and serology, N.A. Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there? Reservoirs? No, but do they take obscure trivia and odd tidbits? No. Like a toxicology screening? At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything, even if he was brimming with cocaine. But still, you should add a request. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. What's next on the list? Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling in the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Be thorough if you want maximum results. Head, chest and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Agreed. Next injury? Nothing. Just in case. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. The perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Right. Next. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Think for a moment. There's time. Don't rush. Hmm. Das weiß ich halt jetzt noch nicht. Auswärtig. Nur hier jetzt, oder?
Why do you say that? Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right, I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. It was a... Uh, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But, personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. We also requested a toxicological screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. For processing. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Machen wir nochmal Wahrnehmung. Your arms reach out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a spider, your hand crawls over his features. Everything is silent. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. The fuck is he doing? The thing you're looking for, it's not there. Crawl out, spider. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from the throat, and there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate. You see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, 
the edges appeared darkened. An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Abrasion collar. Kuno is silent. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As what the fuck is happening? Ah, oh, shit, see? Yes, that's what this part is called. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again, never wake. Your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. This is what he used to regulate his emotions with. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Fucking cavity, see? Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Sharp serrated material. The edges cut right into your skin. Can you... can you get to it? There's a tiny crack. A protrusion in the cranium. Right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it, from the inside. The object that is in there stopped just short of the skull, in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a uh, very small exit wound here. Forget about the fucking exit wound, Beano! The pig is wearing him like a fuck puppet! You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth, covered in blood up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. Fucking beautiful! A bullet. Sure. The bullet falls <clears throat> in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non calibre rifle, some kind of brittle alloy, fractured on impact. Of course, you've earned it. We need to add an item to the injury list, injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar, soft palate, back of mouth. High velocity, temporary cavity in brain tissue, small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound?
opinion, fatal injury. We have extensive tissue destruction away from the one track. We have a bullet. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. Treatment, officer, is an attempt to manipulate the body after death, to hide the real cause with mm -hmm. this injury here. <coughs> yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. I have had my doubts since you showed me the tracks. Why did they carry him over? Why not march him, I thought. There was no satisfying explanation. There have been other signs too, small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. There is, of course, the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. To put him out of his misery? It's possible, but it doesn't explain all the other dubious things here. Lack of struggle, primarily. I may be intellectually sloppy, but I prefer one theory at a time. And this just smacks of treatment to me. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the whirling in rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. Work on the case. Tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing. Great work, detective. After you bag the corpse, Lieutenant Kitsuragi <coughs> will leave the party until tomorrow morning. You can do side tasks, and even the main case, but it might be more difficult. Plan his exit accordingly. All right. There go those beautiful enamel boots. You will never own the full set now. May they rest in processing. Oh well, in another lifetime. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Damn. Der Helm wäre ja wichtig, oder nicht? Und er ist halt ins Meer gekickt worden. Hm.
your bag. Good. What can I help you with? Not an umbrella, I hope. I don't need one myself, you see. Sadly, I need this one myself. It's hydrophobic. Repel- What I can do for you is answer some questions. Nothing like talking to passer- You have. And how did you like Mr. Clare? Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually... Corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm-like corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. Of course. I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a verm myself. But... If you felt like passing some information, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Oh. That's so very, very helpful. And how is that going? Do you have any leads on that gun? Did he now? Well, then it should be any day now. Unless, of course, he's lying to you. Anyway, was there anything else you've heard? Hmm, perhaps he is. Of course, Detective. Should something come up later, down the road? Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Mm -hmm. Mir nicht sicher, ich glaube, ich muss das nicht machen. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag. Bear the squished little thing. I know. You should find the gun that shot this bullet. You should see. That sounds like something a police detective would do. First, you should learn all you can about this. Then find the gun that shot it and the person that gun belongs to. He used it to kill your victim. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jack you wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark... You can just about make out a few strations near the bait. It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments... What's interesting about the bullet thus far? A jacketed bullet, which would have been shot from a military-grade breech-loading rifle. Not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Very interesting. You have an unusual military grade bullet in your hand. Now all you need is to find a gun that could fire it. You can't remember what happened last week. What makes you think you're going what? to remember arcane firearm model? Das als nächstes machen, ne?
Ja. You're still waiting for a replacement for the bull you sent sinking. It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Breach loading. His moves are quick and precise as he first checks the weapon, then aims it. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. What is this? Are you mocking us? This isn't for Betonk! Now, now. No need to get angry again, René. I'm sure the officer tried his best. It's not like there's a bull kiosk here in Martinez. The best, huh? This isn't even a bull. But fine. I guess you did attempt to write your hooliganism. Consider it forgiven. He mumbles something to himself. It seems to be a variety of curses. Yes, the Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the nights. Not out of... I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... Money is tight. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid... I'm fine, goddammit! Mind your own business! <laughs> no one. The bus has been unmanned since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that bus built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill- Evrard created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Ich mache das auch. <lacht> oh, I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. I do it too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard boost now? She is nobody. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss me. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu, and she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Um, <clears throat> übrigens. Um die mich erinnert, dass ich noch ein bisschen Geld bekommen kann. The tear machine stand. Your bottles clunk into the machine. And the Hat wirklich noch ein bisschen.
Glory stuck in the trap. The windows, fumes of heavy. F also, then it's a job. Not mal. The bullet is still safely sealed away. A rifle, revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belma Grave rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian theater of the anti-centennial revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you, the dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. No, but Zilliga, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache, only in working order. <lacht> Interessant. Okay, warte. Aber noch nicht. Ich könnte jetzt erstmal das Zimmer bezahlen. I help you? Got the 20 real? Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Do I have a shaker in my hand? Is this... is this a shaker? It's not a shaker. It's nothing. He's holding nothing. It is but an imitation. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wearing a bow? Am I smiling? Do you see me smiling and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know why? That's right. I'm the cafeteria manager. I'm glad we cleared that. Is there anything else? Play it calm. This man needs to understand you need a drink to help the community deal with police stuff. Oh, well, in that case, let me pour you a nice, big, refreshing marinella. Do you want that out of a glass or a pineapple? Don't be an imbecile. I'm not going to serve you a marinella. I have work to do and broken things to fix. If that was all, I'd like to return to it.
This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are. Ah. That soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with... The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your... Luft. Erledigt. Lass mal... Versuchen mit denen zu reden nochmal. Ich weiß nicht. Eigentlich sollte da der Kim dabei sein, denke ich. Looks like the circus left him. But the clowns are still here. What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... She? So there's an eighth hardy and it's a hardy girl? Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want? Come it has to be good if he won't let you pursue it. Sorry, boss. A bullet, you say? That's mighty curious. Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. Sire, it would be an event most dramatic if you were to produce the bullet and dangle it before their very eyes. Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all! Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid, and his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. All the goofing around is to avoid lying. It's a technique. Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Never been worried in my life, Laumane. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there somewhere. Mm.
progress. So what's my deal? I've got nothing to say to you. Why I am not? You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a mod. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutant International. The cold look in her eyes speaks louder than words. She is not amused. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. Okay. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. Yeah. Immer noch oben. Necromancer pig. That shit was Kuno dies. You're gonna pick one out of his brain like that too? Kuna's gonna go out in a hail of bullets. Gonna look like a fucking porcupine. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? That's the past. You and Kuno are now. Let's talk about how you open the secret door. Fucking a Kuno's kingdom. And then what? You fucking there. You fucking Kuno's kingdom. He's trying to fuck at you again, Kuno. Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno dem- Eh, uh, yeah? Watch your ass in Kuno's town, or Kuno's gonna fuck your head off. That's where Kuno gets his daily- Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? You could use some. Yeah? It's the Mac. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a... Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against you, Kuno! You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you... Fuck you, pig! Don't do Mac! You're gonna... Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come... The fuck do you want with it? Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Get us more. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you even enjoys it from time to time. When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. 
she only hisses and says murder was the case that they gave her. And then there's the fact that she's a girl and appears to be a little younger, certainly smaller, and yet Kuno is afraid of her. What's up with that, Kuno? All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you whispering about. She puts extra stress onto that word, expecting it will make you uncomfortable. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. She's not fucked up. Everyone's fucked up. Stop judging shit. Wrong move. But he's whispering still. You haven't lost him. Just don't mess up again. Or you will. There are no guarantees here. It's okay. The pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. That's it. You let him off the line. That was a bad, manipulative thing to say. You should understand. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. Try to fuck my Kuno! <laughs> Try to fuck my Kuno away! Me and Kuno are tight. We ride for life! You were too pushy last time. Think this through. Just look. While Kuno has no problem being, she came okay. up with that also, and then the all in all, Kuno respects Matt. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. She put... If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've... Crazy. You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell ya? Kuno told ya! Kuno talks to whoever he wants! Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. She's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Captain and shit. She does the real deal. Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. And he doesn't even want to think about it. This isn't just another boast. Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer? His little green eyes are fixed on yours. He's meant everything he said before, but right now, he not only means it, he is sincere. Fucking yeah. Kuno knows you don't want to face this right now. This dark shit. Kuno faces this shit every day. Makes Kuno skin crawl. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. 
A cop would be too large for her to overpower, but a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable, the elderly, the homeless, or other, other children. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Kuno, there, that's it. That's what Kuno is starting to think, yeah? He usually looks you straight in the eye. A little something just crumbled there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. Crazy people. The fucking Nakis. I don't know. It's Suruese. The Suru are an indigenous ethnic minority in the social democratic powerhouse Vasa on the tundra and tiger-covered Isola of Kutla. Far, far away from here. As far as possible, really. You mean evil little red-haired people like her? Yes, they do. The Suru... Suru is? Like that man from Hjelmdal shit? She could be. She could be that Hjelmdal shit? Revelshaw does have a small Sururese community. Or she climbed into a yakberry crate and was shipped over accidentally. Fuck no, she's not me sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. A shoe cupboard just off to the right. Have you been to this place? Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk, under a pile of clothes, like a dog. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there, or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. <laughs> listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. You understand? All right. Now. We can do business. Yeah? What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... I don't hook him up with shit, Kuno! See? Relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Hey, <laughs> cooker. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we releasing. The pan buying shit, that's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need.
Okay. Kuno doesn't hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. Maggot sideways? What are you talking about? You need to maggot up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of... Yes, if you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to transcend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Das hier bräuchte ich halt auch noch. Ich glaube, es macht schon Sinn, irgendwas wieder mal zu verinnerlichen. <laughs> Close this. It's um the drüben hin. John Dummery, you found me. His slender figure is backlit by city lights. 
its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. It was mine. My friends use it from time to time to visit me. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Beautiful. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Trust me. You do. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing. Besides, I've got to run. Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. To the city. It's a beautiful night. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, alright? And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. Okay. Let's get up. Durchsuche erstmal alles. Officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the important... My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of... I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Hanging? What a drag. He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Of course. Let me just say it has been an emotional week for me. I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. No, no. I mean, it was so strange. I could barely believe what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? Sound familiar? That matches the prints you observed at the scene. That's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human. As far as I could tell, I went back inside. Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. 
All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. All I can say is that it was late. No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. Of course, anything I can do to assist the RCF. The coalition is only looking out for the price to The economy impacts the entire international community. Ah, uh, well, I'm... You could say I'm undoing... Yes, as I said before. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? La Communauté Internationale... Your employer... Gut, der Rest it is mich the weniger, most important. Aber ich gehe trotzdem kurz durch. It's the central goal of any sound monetary, which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Take your daily bread, for example. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. But not too far below, no. Too below is also... The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefit. A sound monetary policy is essential for... But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. It's the international organization. But of course. Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier, sur la clé. Martinez? No. Martinez is... So Rivachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, but they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. Is this option D usually the most reasonable answer? Not boring, my friend. Responsible. Moralism is all about compromise and achieving the achievable. It's pragmatic, realistic, and level-headed. An ideology for doers. Are you a doer, my friend? Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? What's there to say? Sur la clé is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the human... Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged... Darling. That can't be an official designation. Because a great percentage of Rivachol's culture... Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sir Laclay's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. Oranye is an exemplary nation who, as a core member of EPIS, contributes 28% of our annual budget. Oranje's economy is one of the most advanced in the world. But that didn't tell you anything about Oranje. About what? Oh, it's very urban and very well organized. Their streets are clean, their horse cars run on time. Whatever you wish, officer. Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. This family immigrated here. Kedra is a candidate member of AP. That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unif- God, yes. Sweet standardization. The backbone of rationality and commerce. 
It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union. Why, it stands for progress and stability, like the moral intern as a whole. It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. A supranational political... You mean revachon? It's one day going to... Except that, candidate member. No, no, can... But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. How did any of us become friends? Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Sorry, who? But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your... He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine art. As though you weren't envious enough of the boy as is. He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. I'm just enjoying the view. Listen. The baby is crying in the neighboring... No. Listen. The Insulindian Bay. This place used to be a luxury, but the million real views stay. My friend can't... A busy bee. What? I'm all ears, officer. A moment. Do you have everything you need from me? Um. I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Was there anything else? Of course. Okay. Ich glaube, ich investiere noch irgendwo. Ich glaube, Rhetorik jetzt. für den Frachtcontainer. Der braucht ziemlich hoch Rhetorik oder auch ein bisschen Zeit. Ja. 
this ding. Kann ich noch irgendwas machen? Den Tag beenden wir. is still cold from the broken window and not too inviting but it's yours the bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window the here we are again my broken bird the waves are coming carrying you away but you can't go you're not cooperating Brother man, it's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your side. That pain in your right side is your enlarged liver, by the way. As for your kidneys, you've really been compounding the damage like But this suffering, it must have some kind of meaning. A story that will come out of it. Perhaps even a story that you will write yourself. Now you've gone off the rails, baby. Now you're stuck sitting here by the tracks, admiring the wreck around you. You just can't help it, looking at yourself. This, you're just stuck here, in the half-world. Could try looking at other people, really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? How many promises have you kept lately? Sir Harry, to the great see-through world. Thou art honorable and just, sire. Tis the snakes who are vile, hissing in the grass. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness? Look at all these lights, blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts! You're just pretending. Pretending that you're asleep, even to yourself. But let it. Let it. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. Okay.